Thanks to be with me, with Tommy. How you doing, Tommy? Oh, girl. Look at that little baby. Look at that little thing. Carter's out delivering another load of wood here. Pulled over and cleaned my window a little bit because it was so bad that you couldn't even see through it hardly. Dad, 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 right. Are you probably that scared of mob now? Too late. This is a pretty area out here. Uh, I've actually delivered to this man before in one of my videos, I, and I actually recorded us going out there. And part of the reason why is just because I like it out here a lot. It's real pretty out here. What in the world? There was a store there last time we came, I'm pretty sure. Where? That's odd. Out there. If you look at my last video, I'm pretty sure there was a store right there. Yeah, what's the new guest? It's, it's gone now. I guess they removed. I guess they removed the whole store. But as you can see, the sun's about to go down on us, but these firewood rides are, are probably one of my favorite parts, to be honest with you. You know, you've got all your wood done and everything, all the hard work is done. You've got it loaded and, you're, and you get to enjoy the scenery on these rides. And it's just, right now it's in the six, or maybe not right now, I may have cooled off some, but earlier it was in the 60s. So today is a beautiful day and I absolutely love these country rides. That's something I used to do, you know, before I was married and stuff. Uh, I, I loved it. I would just get out at nighttime and go ride around on these back country roads and I, it was just one of my favorite things to do. And still to this day, I love doing it. E even now, me and my wife and children, sometimes we'll get out in the van or in the truck or whatever, usually in the van now, but, and uh, we'll go ride around and get something to eat, you know, and maybe stop here and there and just see the scenery. There's so much beautiful stu uh, stuff out there. But this, this area up here is kind of up near Cave Run Lake. In one of my videos, see there's Daniel Boone, Daniel Boone National Forest, I said. And now I, I talked about this a long time ago, getting a firewood permit to get wood out of these national forests. There's part of the lake right there. And you can do that, look at that. Stop the truck. Wow, that's a lake? Yeah, that's the lake. That's an ocean. It's beautiful. And you see a lot of wildlife back here. There are black bear back here. I've, I've not seen one myself here. Don't want to either. But they're here. Look at that. I'm in the middle of the road. And I don't even care too much. Man, ain't that beautiful. Look at the wind in those trees. Today is just, the weather is nice. It's windy today though, it's really windy. Took my kids out earlier. What? All right, let's get this show on the road. Me and Carter like these journeys. Seat belt. Yeah. Yeah, that thing will beep. Until I do put it on anyways. What? I don't know. Like some sort of little boat or something. But this man, uh, I mentioned him in one of my other videos how that uh, I had delivered to him and how important it was for him to have that wood, he was telling me. Because his electric had went out and the electric company, it took him a little bit to get to him, you know, because he lived so far out here. And uh, I talk, when I talked to him on the phone again this time, uh, he kind of talked about how that uh, the last load I delivered him, uh, his uh, 
heat pump or something had went out. I can't remember what he what he said. It was something electrical. Whatever it was. And uh, it had went out on him. And uh, he was talking about how that wood got him through. And he was really thankful for it. And he was, he was telling me it burned really good and everything. That oak that I bring and what you see me get from the 200 acre wood a lot of times. And I've had quite a few different people talk about how good that stuff burns. It's just been down for a long time, you know, and it's not rotten, it's solid stuff, but it's been down for so for long enough to be to dry out. And uh, and so I'm bringing them some uh, black oak and cherry right now. It's starting to get dark on us out here. It actually looks like on, on this phone, I'm looking at it, it looks like there's more, it looks like it's more daylight than it does in person. It's kind of odd. In person, it actually looks a little darker. But it's just beautiful out this way. There's campgrounds out here. See the sign here? Picnic area, Daniel Boone National Forest, it says. So that's where we're at right now. And very beautiful area. It can be very dangerous too with uh, different things out here, you know, coyotes. bears and stuff like that. Coyotes. Yeah, coyotes, a pack of them. I actually heard a story here a while back about a great Pyrenees, you know, that's the kind of dog I have. And uh, I think they said there were uh, 13, 12 or 13 coyotes that came upon a farm maybe where they had livestock and that Pyrenees uh, was able to fight them off for the most part by itself. So that tells you a lot about those dogs. I think it killed eight of the coyotes by itself. I mean, and that says something about those great Pyrenees, how strong they are, just how tough they are. That's why I really like them for that. You know, they're not only that, I like them because of they're really good guard dogs and they're strong and they're tough, but they're gentle as well. And I really like that about them. They are very protective, but they have a very gentle side too. And I really like that. Right, Whereas right. some dogs are just, uh, there's some dogs I wouldn't even want my kids around, I'll be honest with you. Certain breeds I wouldn't even want my kids around. But uh, it's really pretty out here, you know. It's, uh, it's winter time, here we are in February. Look at all these trees here. Look how pretty. Yeah, this is this is the Daniel Boone National Forest we're driving through here. Wait, really? Yeah, and so the lake is up here as well, Cave Run Lake. That that you seen back there, if I'm not mistaken, is part of the lake. So it's just, it's I like to document this stuff sometimes, but every time we do these deliveries, I really enjoy it. You know, for the most part, I've had some deliveries that wasn't that enjoyable as well. Like there's been times me and Carter have went kind of far before, and my phone will lose service, and I have no idea how to get there. You know, without it. I've had some I've had some actually pretty rough deliveries. Most of those are usually farther away because I have delivered up to like two hours away before. But when I did that, uh, here's a sharp curve. When I did that, I charged for the gas as well. Uh, mountains. I'm not a I'm not a heights kind of guy. I'm not. Like you see these tree guys getting up in these trees and swinging around. I'm not that kind of guy. I never have been. I don't know if you can get over that kind of fear or not, but I'll tell you right now, one of my biggest fears is heights. I've never liked them. Never have. I'll fell a tree from the ground, and even then you got to be careful, but I, I ain't climbing up in one. I had a guy ask me that before if I would. I said, no, you go right ahead. A lot of those guys are maybe 200 pounds tops anyways it seems like so i could be wrong there could be some really big guys too in that weight but i'm getting i'm close to 300 pounds myself so i don't want to be up in a tree i'll pass i respect it you know their bravery and stuff because it's uh, there's no way i'd want to do it but I, the reason i brought that up is because we're up on a mountain right now and these roads are sketchy and and i don't even like looking over the edge of them that's how, how much i hate heights forest here go to record over that way but don't drop it kind of point it out the window and show how I have it. we are up really high but uh, I don't, you may not have seen my other video but it's the same way we came then really? yeah like I don't know if you was with me during that delivery or not I don't think you were. Daniel Boone National Forest. This 
man lives out here far and the thing is too he's he's uh <clears throat> i think he's uh, kind of handicapped he's an, i don't know how old he is but i worry for him honestly after meeting him and knowing that he's this far out by himself and i think all of his family is out of state so i worry for him and that's why i told him when i talked to him i said if you ever need anything let me know i don't care to come and try to help you if i can it's a, i like helping people it's a, it's a there's a joy in it and i've met other people that do too me and my brother were out one time in a field and uh it's it kind of funny looking back on it but uh it was at the cattle farm actually and uh we had finished this tough day of splitting wood and i had a trailer i was delivering it with the trailer back then a double axle trailer actually and we had wood in the truck bed and the trailer if i'm not mistaken and the, the farmer told me i think he's in his 80s he told me before he would tell me just about every time he talked to me he said now when you go in that field he said watch out because there's a part right in the middle of that field that's like a swamp he said stay away from that he said because my tractor is at my other farm and if you get stuck i'm not gonna be able to get you out and he would tell me that pretty much every time I talked to him. And I'd always say, okay, okay. And uh, we, 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 yeah, were you there then? Yeah. So Carter, you were there? Yeah. Carter was there too. That's all and, the uh, and so after, you know, splitting all this wood, and by the way, a lot of the wood was sycamore. Yeah. It was sycamore wood, but it had seasoned to a point to where it was, you could split it. It was still tough though at this point even, yeah. but we split like a trailer load of it. And so it was a rough day, me my brother and Carter. And we were on our way out and I was, you know, I, I was so lost in thought and just tired and, and, and happy to have it all done. I was looking out my window like this right here, kind of looking sideways and driving. And as soon as I looked up, there was the spot he was talking about. Cause I don't think I had actually seen the spot. He had just told me about it. So I'd, I'd always drive around the field and drive on the side. But when I was going out, I wasn't thinking like I don't a lot of the times I've got a very forgetful mind and I drove right into the middle of that swamp area and I mean I seen it coming as soon as I looked up I seen it and there was nothing we could do I pretty much drove right into the middle of it and stopped and we were stuck I mean the tires were buried halfway at least I would say and uh, I was covered in mud I, I got out and but my point with this story is there was a man there who who lived next to that farm and this man went out of his way for a, uh, 30 minutes to an hour he had a he had like a come along you know the kind that you he, he attached it to a tree and it was a heavy duty one and uh then he attached it uh we we had to detach the trailer and pull it off separately because it was loaded with wood so uh he pulled the truck out and then the trailer too and i think he was able to pull the trailer out maybe with his jeep because he had a four-wheel drive jeep but he, he used that his jeep wouldn't budge my truck though and, tra and the trailer together so he used that come along and i offered the man money and everything he would not take it he was just happy to help me, the man was. He wanted to help me. I did not even know him. He went out of his way to help me, and it meant so much to me. It really did. You don't see that real often any, anymore nowadays, you know? You really don't. Like, I've I've watched some of those videos online, and some of other people probably have too, you know, because I really like to see uh, homeless people get help and help, help them or anybody in need. They don't have to be homeless. But uh, I've watched those videos where people will do like experiments, you know, have a homeless person sitting there, even kids sometimes, little kids. And so many people will walk past them people and not say the first thing. And I understand, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are on drugs and the first thing they're gonna do when they get that money from you is take it to do drugs, you know? But I'd like to at least give somebody food or something, especially a little kid. I've seen videos of adult, adult after adult after adult, walking past a little child sitting on the side of the streets with the sign and to me i'll be honest with you it absolutely disgusted me i'm not even going to try to butter butter that one up it just disgusted me that adults could walk past a little kid like that i don't care whose kid that is if i'm out there and i see a little kid sitting on the side of the road i'm going to go up and ask him hey what's what's going on why are you here let me take you somewhere you know let me get you something to eat as long as i'm able i'm going to help them and even if i don't have a lot of money at the time i'm going to help them find their parents or something but just seeing that you know it makes you realize how many people out there are out there that just really don't care about other people i mean that's the world we're living in but then there's also good people out there like that man who will go out of their way to help you and i really like that i, I think i mentioned in the last video actually when i was coming out this way uh, how that god loves a cheerful giver somebody that's happy to give not somebody that gives and they and they hate they hate it you know people who are, you ask them for something they give it to you and they sit there and scoff and 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 mutter you know and they're just complaining about it they're not happy they hate it actually i've seen i've seen people like that 
and uh, it just really it's shameful to see in a person it really is it, it, it's something that disgusts me I'll be honest with you because it's a choice you know for a person to be like that or not they don't have to be it's either it's a choice and for a person to choose to be that way to me is disgusting that's completely off subject I know but anyways we're on a firewood ride here and this is the kind of stuff that goes through my head I guess sometimes but that, the way that man helped me, it meant a whole lot to me. And I tried to pay him, he wouldn't take it. From what I remember, I don't think he took anything from what I remember. But it, we were stuck, wasn't we? We were stuck. We were stuck bad. Yeah. As you can see, I told you he lives pretty far out here. And I think he said he's lived here since he was a little boy. He's a retired lawyer or something like that. Very humble, friendly, soft-spoken man. I'd really like to get him on camera if he'd let me, but I don't really want to intrude upon him like that. We may see, though. Like, I may ask him if, if he cares if Carter records when we come up here. I love meeting new people, you know, good people. I love meeting them, good people, and, and hearing their stories and talking to them and things like that. I love that. That's one of my favorite things about doing this. Not only, uh, not only doing firewood, but doing landscaping and lawn care, too. I meet a lot of friendly people. And it's one of my favorite parts about it. It really is. I know now at this point it's very dark. Even in the video, it looks dark now. And so, but the reason I'm getting here so late though is uh, he contacted me earlier. Or we spoke earlier, and uh, he said he wouldn't be back till later today. And he said, "I don't know if you'll be able to do that or not." And actually, by the time he called me, it was like it was probably around five o'clock. And I told him, I said, are you going? Are you available any early tomorrow morning? And he said he had something to do. And I said, well, that's all right. I'll go ahead and bring it. So that's why I'm out this late, which, I mean, there's been many times that I have been out this late. I remember a landscaping job that I did. When I first got into lawn care and landscaping, I was doing one out in Lexington. And there was 10 acres there. I mowed, and I bid way too cheap when I started to. I mean, I bid. I remember my first yard I bid in lawn care and landscaping was $20 I bid it for. And I was just so happy to get the lawn, you know. And I did that lawn for probably two years. And, uh, and and after a while, you know, I got enough lawns to where I didn't really, I didn't price that cheap anymore. My minimum at that point was like 35 and up, you know, because you got to think you got gas, oil, string, your, your equipment, the maintenance on it and everything. I think I just hit a bat. I'm rolling my window up actually. I had a big bat hit my window one day and I don't want one coming in this truck. Yeah, that's why I rolled mine up. But uh where was I at? They're talking about uh money and long term stuff. Huh? We're talking about uh See I lose my train of thought so easily. Yeah, you were talking about like how you throw your long term stuff. Oh okay, I started out bidding really cheap. But uh that first lawn too, it was one of the, it was probably one of the worst ones I did because they would have trash all over the lawn just about every time I mowed and, I, and they'd have their dog chains strung out in the yard. It just, you, I mowed for people like that and I didn't like it at all. I hated it actually. And as I got more lawns after a while, I got pickier about, you know, what kind of prices I would uh, bid them for and uh, who I wanted to mow for. And, uh, but starting out, I was just happy to get the lawn. And, uh, but anyways, after a while, I, I upped the price to that man. I texted the guy that I did the $20 lawn for, and I did a good job for the guy I did. And for about two years, I did. And finally, I told him, I think I was going up. I had a lawn right, that I picked up uh, after him right across the road from him. I actually had about four in his area. And I had, I had priced all of them, uh, you know, more expensive than that. And when I upped the price... The 30 or $35, maybe 30, he, he, he said he was gonna start doing it himself. And that's what you gotta do sometimes, you know? People ain't always gonna want to give you the, the amount that you're asking for. And that's fine, you don't have to cave, cave in either. And, and you don't have to cave in and just give in and do it too cheap either. It's not worth it. Cause you have, and, and I learned that the hard way. Cause you have equipment to maintain and, and your equipment is gonna have problems, it will. And whatever you do, you know, if you use it, your equipment's gonna have problems. And that's what happened, you know. And then here, here I'd be, you know, owing this on my mower and this on my weed eater and this here, you know. And and you're not, and you're not, not getting enough money to fix everything. So you got, you have to bid things right. And it was a learning process for me. And I'm into my this this spring will be my fifth year in lawn care and landscaping. And my at four years now, this is pretty much coming to the end of my fourth year in firewood. 
So I have four years under my belt in firewood and 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 four I've already got four under my belt in lawn care and landscaping. I'll be coming up on five soon, you know, starting my fifth. And but you have to bid you have to bid on bid your jobs right. You don't you don't want to give them away if if you know they're, they're going to find people who will do them cheaper than you but that don't always mean those people will do a good job they're going there's guys out there that are selling wood right now for 60 dollars a truckload i think i've seen but the wood's probably green you know it's probably mixed it's probably it's probably not the greatest stuff i'm giving them seasoned oak for the most part and uh delivering it stacking it a lot of guys don't even stack it as far as i know and so i feel like i'm doing i'm doing fair with how i'm doing I think we're getting close to this place here. There was a point I was wanting to make with that. Yeah, I think we're coming up on this place here. He's far out though. He is, he's far out. And that's, I've up, I've up my price, you know, on firewood quite a bit too. When I, well, when I first started, I would do it like $70 a truckload is what I would sell it for. Uh huh? Maybe. $70 a truckload is what I'd sell it for, you know, and then I, if it was out of my county, I would charge extra for gas you know and i would stack it everywhere i went and and you know that was all included which helps a lot in my opinion you know i believe but uh yeah i think i think that's his place over there i don't know for sure hopefully we ain't lost where i'm looking where i'm recording this i haven't looked at my gps so there's a bat it's got to be a bat yeah, that was a bat I hit earlier, I think. Yeah, I hit it. I think I seen it go down under the headlight. Let me check my map. Okay, so we are going the right way. We're almost there. Falling. But yeah, you gotta bid you gotta bid your things right. You, you don't wanna give your stuff away. You're a hard hard earned wood or you know, you the good services you're providing, whatever, you know. And I did that at the beginning. I was way too cheap with stuff. And I got a lot of work at the beginning and I and I did a good job. I took you know, I, I took it serious, you know. Starting my own business, I was I was so happy to do that. And when it worked out, I was so happy. I told a lot of my family and my wife, I said, I'll never work for somebody again in my life. And I don't intend to. I don't. I intend to work for myself the rest of my life. There's a, so much work out there, really, if you want it. There is. If you do a good job and you're smart, you know, managing your money and everything, and there, there's no reason you shouldn't do well. That ain't it right there, I don't think, is it? No, that ain't it. Anyways, I'm having kind of, I know I'm close. Yeah, I remember these places somewhat. I've delivered to him. I think this will be like my fourth or fifth time. Something like that. A very friendly guy, too. I hope to hope to deliver to him for many years to come. He was talking to me earlier, and he said that he didn't want to lose me as a contact. You know, he's really happy with the wood. In 800 feet, your destination will be on the left. cabins all over these hills and mount, little mountains out here and uh, the lake. I'm sure it is beautiful out here, you know. I mean, it definitely is. I mean, living out here, I'm sure is beautiful. The Your destination is on the left. Okay, here he is right here, I believe. But yeah, I would like to record him. I just don't want to intrude, you know. I don't know how he'd feel about that. If you've seen the other video where I delivered this one, you may remember this. Woodland Retreat, it says right there on that. Oh, yeah, what I was thinking earlier. Anyways, I, in Lexington, I did a job for a woman and a man when I first started out, and that's what I was trying to get at. They had 10 acres, and I mowed 10 acres with a zero turn and weeded it by myself, and I uh, did it in a day, and, and the mowing took about six hours with a with the, uh, zero turn. It took about six hours to mow 10 acres, which is a lot of land. And uh, and then there was a lot of weed eating there too. The weeding took about two hours, and that was moving. I'm talking about mowing too until my mower ran out of gas, and then put, filling it up and getting back on it and going. And uh, weed eating up pretty much the same way. You know, I stayed consistent and kept a good pace. And so, oh man, this vehicle might be right in the way. But the woman came out there one day. I was doing a mulching job for him, and it was at nighttime. You know, I started out I was working. A lot of times by myself, I, it's hard to find good help, and I was just taking on work and trying to get it done by myself, you know, and keeping my overhead as low as I could. And she came out there one night to me, and when I was doing the mulch, it was, it was, it was dark, it was getting dark, and I had been doing it for hours. 
they, uh, they had a lot of trees they wanted mulched and uh, and she told she came out and she said uh, she called me Michael because that's my first name she said Michael your wife is waiting and I thought maybe Chassie had called or something I said did she call you and she said no she's uh, she said she's waiting for you at home she said you're out here at nighttime still working and she said you know you put your heart into your work you put your heart into your work but she, she said you need to find you a good helper and that's true you know it is it and, and and for me i intend carter and camden my boys to be my helpers because i've had a really hard time finding good help to be honest but here he is let's see what he thinks about this camera all right we got that one done this might be a longer video than i intended but i like this part of it too so i may document this sometimes as well you know and as i said i know uh, maybe i didn't say this but i know some people won't like that at all and some people will you know i'm just gonna post you know whatever i feel is interesting you know and this is part of it and i really enjoy these uh deliveries myself honestly and i don't get them very often just because the videos turn out so long to begin with you know the, the, as far as going out and bucking and splitting and loading the wood they turn out really long anyways without the delivery and you know, this is just the delivery you know and the ride along part of the ride along so and it's probably going to be like 40 minutes or 30 minutes i'm not sure how long i'll make it but it just shows you how much time it can take but i don't like to rush either when i'm talking to people i like to listen to what they say that dog there was jumping on carter a lot that's something i don't like i they was jumping on him a lot and the, and the guy said something a little bit but i said something if i'm uncomfortable doing that in front of people you know but if if it, I'll say something if they don't. <laughs> uh, there was a dog that growled one time at Carter when he was there, and I asked them people. They took it in, but I mean, really, the people, whoever's responsible for the dog, they need to they need to be the ones taking care of it. I ain't allowing my dog to bark at a, or growl a little kid. No way. I wouldn't allow it. But it's different with different people. But as I said, if they ain't going to take care of it, I will. I'm not going to let a dog growl at my kid or jump on my kid either gonna happen but we got this one done and we're heading home now it was a late delivery and the only reason it was this late is just because he he wasn't getting home till late i think it was around five o'clock when he contacted me and I'm not sure what time it is now but it gets dark around 5 30 or so but uh we're gonna head on home now and rest for the rest of the day my birthday is tomorrow so i'm gonna be 31 years old and hopefully see what Carter gets me. Where are you going to get me, Carter? Now I let it out. So you are going to get me something? Maybe. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate you watching. And until next time, be safe and God bless you.